Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And it's Sunday morning, March 5th, I think it is. Yeah, March 5th. Hopefully I can get this posted by the end of the day, but I doubt it because, you know, editing and all kinds of stuff and spending time with my wife on the weekend, that kind of thing. But we've got four knives and something quite special for you. Not that the knives aren't special, but we've got something special for you here. And uh, I think we're gonna open this first. And then we've got uh, a couple things from Real Steel, Ganzo and Civivi. Maybe you're interested. I hope so. Stick around, come on down to the tabletop with me and let's take a look at these things. I usually showcase a knife when I do an unboxing, and this is the Kubi Hide. I was hoping to review this quite soon, but right now White Mountain Knives is totally sold out on these, and I bought these from White Mountain Knives. But I'll leave a link in the description down below, like for everything that you see here. And uh, for these as well, put your name on the notify me list there, and then you'll be notified when they're back in stock. That's what I've done when I get the notification when they're back in stock. I'll make my video or I might make my video beforehand and I'll just post it then so that you know people can buy them because often when I post a review of a knife that isn't available right then at least not available at Weight Mountain Knives or whatever since they are the main company that I buy things from some people get upset that there's not nothing available now this is a liner lock I think there's five different colors I got the JG10 uh, you can get this black wash finish and is it stone wash or satin? I've forgotten. Anyways, 14C28N and it's a nice liner lock. We've got an end flipper. Works quite well. There's a nice hole there so you can, if you can, get your finger underneath there. And I'm still recovering from that injury right there where I injured myself, uh, you know, trying to work on a slip joint knife that I didn't protect my edge of. You know, I haven't cut myself with a slip joint knife during normal use, but uh, during maintenance, I cut myself right there, and that's 100% my fault. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyhow, this is just under three inches in here. At least that's what they say. Now, I didn't measure it yet. I'll put it on the screen what measurement it is that I got. So high flat grind. It's nice and thin. This is a fun knife I've been using. Anyhow, what we got first here is from, uh, the website is called Skiff Made Knives. This is a guy in New York State, in, of course, United States of America, and he's a knife maker. He makes nice knives. At some point, and I'm not sure exactly when, he started making cage bearings and replacement bronze washers. Now, I just got an email I got an email uh, this year from a guy who just really dislikes ball bearings. Uh, a guy named David. And uh, I've been emailing back and forth with David for a while. And, ooh, got lots of good stuff here. And, yeah, that's everything. And David really dislikes ball bearings. Now, I don't have any of the replacement washers for them, but they've got nice phosphor bronze washers that are a replacement. Now, isn't that nice? I think that's really, really nice. That's a duplicate there. So what he's got is this gauge block. Now let's take it out of the bag. Uh, I didn't write down the price of this part. I didn't, I don't know, I didn't write down the prices of any of these. So address for where to get this and uh, you know, the prices, they're all down below. Some of them might be on the screen. This is so that you can get your own ball bearings and measure, you know, what size it is. You know, see, it doesn't fit through the uh, 3 64th there, but it fits through the 1 16th. So if you need to buy some new ball bearings of this one, it's the 1 16th that you need. And then you measure the size of the hole as well. And it's right there. It's that five millimeter hole, 1 16th. You know, if you've got this, that makes it the easiest. You do have to measure, you know, this diameter as well. That's not on this gauge, but you have to measure that as well on some knives, because some knives have, you know, the bearings inset. Some have them on, some have them inset, so you might have to measure the outside diameter as well. A gauge block like this can't, you know, put everything on it. It would have to be quite big. But this is, you know, something you can buy, and there's his logo there, SW. 
skiffmadeblades.com is the URL where you can buy these things and, of course, buy his knives. Now, um, let me see. He's got a couple of packages here. Get these out. Oh, that's nice. Now, one of these packages is a kit of three that you can buy. And that's this package here. You can buy this package together in one kit for one price. Um, you know, there's two in each of these. If you want a sample pack, you know, just to see what the quality is of what he makes. Uh, he calls them rocket glide rings. And yep, yeah, here's the, well, the sizes are on there. I'll just leave a link for that. And then I ordered three specific sizes for three knives that I have and I'm going to replace them. So he does have steel ball bearings, but most of them are ceramic ball bearings. So I just wanted to show you both. Uh, I think I'd rather like ceramic ball bearings more than steel, but some people might want steel. So he's got some in steel. He's got some in ceramic. And um, there you go. If you've got cage ball bearings like this, and quite often one of the balls is missing, he also sells the balls separately, ceramic or stainless steel balls separately, so that you can just buy some balls and replace the ball bearings. But these are not fold-over cages. And I'll give you close-up pictures as well. This is a solid piece of, I believe, phosphor bronze. And it's got the individual holes milled in there. And then it's got the balls set in those individual holes and it feels very smooth to the finger, and I'll find out how smooth it is on a knife. In any case, you know, this is much more high-tech than this. I'm gonna test these out, and I'm gonna do a video of a review of these items. So let me put this back in here before I lose it, because I am so efficient at losing stuff. Like, I mean, I can lose just about anything. Also, when I do the video for these, so look out for the video for these, this is going to be a giveaway. Not on this video, but this is going to be a giveaway on the video. I'm keeping one for myself, and one's going to be a giveaway. So let me put that to the side. Maybe I'll just put that on the corner of the screen to remind you of that product. I've got two real steel products. Now, one of them you've seen already, and uh, you've seen it if you've been watching my 15,000 subscriber giveaway video. This is the Sacra, but I hadn't done a, an unboxing video of it yet. There you go. What's cool about the Sacra is they call it an integrated. Look at the back here. It's one piece of steel, these liners, folds over, comes back. So it's an integrated access lock. Very smooth action. Very fidget friendly. No blade play side to side, up and down. And micarta on top. Uh, their blue denim micarta is sold out right now. They got two different colors. Realsteelshop.com has got this. I'm going to look and see if other stores have it as well. Put the links down below. Uh, I didn't look up what the price of this was. I got these just very early in the new year. They were doing a Boxing Day sale and I got a really good price on these. But they're no longer a really good price. I think these are 80 something, 89, 82, 80 something US dollars for this knife. And uh, so it's not cheap. It's got Bowler K110 steel, and this is a Poltergeist Works. Uh, Jakob W is the designer. I, I just can't say his name. I'd like to, but I just <laughs> can't pronounce it. Very pointy knife, drop point kind of blade. It's it's beautiful, and it comes in three colors, I believe. The Real Steel Hugen. Mine is the G10 one. You can also get it in Micarta. Uh, there might be other versions as well. I like the way you know Real Steel packs it. It's it's sort of bulk. You know they don't make special boxes for each knife, but the way they do that nice cutout and give you a microfiber cloth. It's actually quite nice. This knife, uh, it's strange. 
at White Mountain Knives, the G10, the, at least the orange G10, costs more money than the brown micarta version of the same knife. This is an Ivan Bregnitz design, you know, classic liners. There's a lanyard pin back here. Real Steel likes to do lanyard pins. There's a pin back here that you can use for a lanyard in, you know, they didn't really need it there, so, but it's also the screw for the pocket clip, but you can tie your lanyard off on there. And uh, a little bit of jimping on the end of that, like I'm not sure why, but there is. And the pocket clip, right and left pocket clip with a screw on the end, and it's a full-size folder. Nice amount of jimping up here, that feels good. We've got fullers. Um, what steel is this? VG10 steel. And uh, let me use my right hand. I'm a little better on axis locks with right hands. Can you believe it? I grew up left-handed and uh, with axis locks I'm better with my right hand because you know I just played mostly with them with my right hand. Some people buy a, a new knife, especially if they're knife newbies, and they expect to be as good at doing it you know, deploying the blade and playing with it and fidgeting with it as the guys on the videos, and that's just not true. It takes time to learn. But this is a full-size knife, VG10. It's a bit pricey at uh, white, at, at Real Steel Shop, because I bought these at realsteelshop.com, which is Real Steel's outlet store. Not discount outlet, but it's their outlet store. When I bought it, you know, it was quite cheap, comparatively cheap. Right now it's 107 US dollars at Real Steel Shop, but uh, the brown micarta version is $79.99 at White Mountain Knives, same steel. So micarta for $79.99, and then you take off 10% with discount code CCE. So that's going to make it like 72 ish dollars US. Yeah, it's a little over what I usually review at, but for 2023, you know, I upped my ceiling a little bit. This is a tiny bit past even that ceiling. You know, my ceiling was around 70 bucks, 70 to 75 actually. So this would be within the 70 to 75 for the brown micarta, but this orange one's 95.20 at White Mountain Knives, 107 at Real Steel Shop. I think it might be slightly overpriced for what you get. And Real Steel used to have, you know, much more competitive prices, but their prices have been going up lately. So these are two Axis lock knives that they've come out with recently, two different designers. And as you see them next to each other, the Hoogan is quite a bit bigger. But this one is already 3.2 inches. So this is over your three inch limit. Uh, the next knife that we're gonna look at is the Civivi Foldus C21044-2. This one's uh, brown linen micarta. Oh, yeah. Still sealed on both sides, so let me use my hide to cut that seal. There we go. And let's take a look at this. Of course, you got the microfiber cloth, you got your stickers, you got your paperwork, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, nice pouch. Savivi's so always done a nice pouch. This, whoa, almost dropped it on the floor, just on my lap. Oh, this is a very fine linen micarta. That's nice, not a coarse linen. See, like this is, you know, a denim micarta. This is much more fine, this linen micarta. And this is a slip joint knife with a wire clip, O-Stap held design, end um, flipper. Oh, very nice, very smooth. It's a detent slip joint knife. I like that. Uh, Nitro V, I believe. Yeah, it says Nitro V very lightly right there, and then O step held design on that bevel. Yeah, my skin's so oily. I've got marks on it already. Uh, right and left pocket clip if you want. It's a double detent slip joint knife. I, I much prefer double detent over single detent. And uh, there you go. Oh, by the way, I did post a video about slip joint knives on Saturday. And I was talking about safety, how to use them safely and stuff. And I wasn't clear on how I felt about, you know, if people hurt themselves with a slip joint knife, 
you know, and I did doing maintenance right there. I made it sound, well, I said it outright, that it's the human's fault when they hurt themselves with a slip joint knife. Now, technically that's true. That doesn't mean I'm uh, per se blaming the human. Because for the most part, when people hurt themselves with slip joint knives, it tends to be people that weren't taught how to use a knife, slip joint knife safely. And that was the main point of the video. I wanted to show you how to use a slip joint knife safely. And uh, I wanted to show you why people get hurt and you know they put pressure on the spine somehow or they use it for puncturing. Uh, another type of puncturing you know is digging a hole. You know, sometimes you do that in some kinds of bushcraft things. I'm not blaming, especially if you cut yourself as a kid with a slip joint knife. That's not your fault. That's the fault of the person who gave you that knife and didn't teach you how to use it safely. Now, my father, um, God rest his soul, my father never taught me how to use a slip joint knife, but he bought me some and he gave them to me and he just let me go. I was very fortunate because I got three older brothers and they showed me how to do it safely and that's why I've never hurt myself with a slip joint knife until this past week when I hurt myself doing some maintenance on a slip joint knife. But I've never hurt myself using a slip joint knife. Now this is called the Foldus, like I said, O-Step Hell Design. I like the extra jimping down here and your finger gets there and that helps protect you from the knife closing on you because if you're gripping it there, you know, it it goes up to there and you can't close it any further. I guess you could technically with enough pressure, but the accidental pressure on the spine is not going to hurt you very easily. Nice and thin. And uh, this linen micarta is beautiful. Three different prices comes three different ways. There's sort of an antiqued brushed kind of copper version. I like that T8 screws back here, T8 screw here. I like that wire clip. And, you know, it's sub three inch for sure. Beautiful. I'm very happy with this Foldus. I'm going to be carrying that an awful lot. Finally, we've got the Adamanti. Now, Adamanti is a line of knives from Ganzo. Specifically, this is the Samson. And I got the Samson Blue. Uh, it comes, I think, in five different colors, maybe six different colors, five or six different colors. And uh, oh, I didn't tell you the price for this first. Sorry, got to go back to this for just a second. Uh, the price for this is the lowest priced one, like mine, fifty nine seventy five at White Mountain Knives. You save ten percent. That's fifty three seventy eight in Canada. The lowest price I saw was eighty eight dollars. Uh, this price at White Mountain Knives with a discount is about seventy three fifty Canadian. So you would save fourteen and a half dollars Canadian by buying this at White Mountain Knives. So there you go. And of course, at both places, you got to pay some shipping. Uh, but at uh, White Mountain Knives, you don't have to pay the British Columbia tax. So even if you have to pay duty, you know, almost always it's cheaper at White Mountain Knives for something like this. So this is the Samson Ganzo Adamanti, sort of a classic style, a modern take on a classic style. And uh, there's the flipper up here. Ta-da! So you've got a guard on both sides. You've got a, you know, puncturing kind of knife. And you, with those two guards, it's going to be very safe to puncture things. Safe for you. <laughs> Might not be safe for the things you're puncturing, but safe for you. Uh, it's in D2 steel. And um, the designer's name is on there. Brutalica. Brutalica design made by Ganzo. Adamanti G10 slabs on top of these thick liners. Then you get the thick steel bolster uh, and um, bolster up here and then on the end as well. Why is my brain taking a nap on what that's called back here? Anyhow, pocket clip is right side only and it reflects the blade in its shape. It's a fairly small pocket clip. Hmm. I'll definitely be testing that out. And a lanyard pin at the back. I like I like the lanyard pin at the back right there. That's a nice touch. Much prefer that over a hole. I don't use lanyards much on pocket knives, but this thing's pretty heavy. Like this, 
This, if you're going to use it as a fighting knife, this is a heavy fighting knife. Just don't try that in Canada. You're going to get yourself in a truckload of trouble. I probably wouldn't carry this knife in public in Canada anywhere at all. Because uh, a knife for the purpose of self-defense against humans is illegal in Canada. You can't use it for that. And clearly they're going to say that this is a self-defense knife, that any rational person's going to believe that it's you know, intended for that. Of course, you can use a knife for just about anything, but intended. Got a thin, thin, false edge here, so it's not sharp at all. And then we've got the sharp edge down here. Feels fairly sharp. Um, it's not super thin, but then this design's really designed for puncturing, isn't it? It really is. Looks like that spine is right down the middle. And then that fuller that goes part of the way back. Oh, here on this side it says Adamanti. So yeah, it's got some heft to it. There you go. These are the four knives in this unboxing video. Plus, don't forget the bearings. And we'll do videos about that at a later date. Thank you so much to my financial supporters. Those of you who help me out with Patreon and with YouTube memberships. I get around $100 uh, US per month with those two sources combined, and that helps me to buy some of the knives that I review. I still have to end up selling almost every knife that I review. Uh, oh, by the way, the hide here as well. I'll put him on the side right there. These are the items that you saw, well, the ball bearings as well, in this video. And uh, thank you so much. Please like, share, comment, and if you've not yet done so, please subscribe to the channel. It really does make a difference, and it takes just one little click. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb, or your middle finger. Bye for now.